More perfect union is a really important phrase for our time. So although we've never been perfect, we could be. And it's in that striving to be more perfect that we can find the beauty of America. My name is Jake Herman. I'm the founder of More Perfect Union. I did not recognize the country that I left to fight for as a Marine in 2000. So when I was overseas fighting extremism to help protect this country, to protect the idea of America, I never imagined that I would come home and realize that actually the greatest threat to our democracy right now is not ISIS or Al-Qaeda, it's extremism here in the United States. It's extremism in our politics that is causing us to hate and fear one another. And I knew had, I had to do something about it, I had to get involved. For me, there were some very practical reasons why I joined the military. The More Perfect Union is a veteran-led organization. Because of that, you know, folks trust veterans on both the left and right. We have the unique ability to go into these communities and bring people together in a way that sometimes others can't. Today with our event, we gathered a bunch of donations here in Glen Rose. Um, we also donated a, a pig to be smoked. We had all the donations available to those in our town that are in need. We do community service projects to help the community. We do civic education and engagement, and we do social gatherings. We can share meals together. We've done Habitat for Humanity house builds. But the point is we're getting people together to do good work for the community. Needs that the community has identified that our group can go in and meet. Well, More Perfect Union Brickyard is our version of chapters. It's called a brickyard because we're building the country and communities back brick by brick. My name is Mary Tobin and I'm the proud director of programs for More Perfect Union. I believe that I was led to More Perfect Union because of the pattern of service that was established in me when I first attended the United States Military Academy at West Point. We were taught there that even after our service to the military, we needed to live a lifetime of selfless service to the nation. But they are always in the district. Military veterans are taught to connect to people that they have nothing in common with to form bonds, to even work together to make positive impact. And so we bring that experience, we bring that drive to serve to local communities. So that is a key indicator that if we train our leaders to view their communities as strong, as already having assets, and how do we go in and support and scale that impact of that work. And then we build that coalition of the willing, as we like to call it, community leaders, uh, elders, young people, people who are already committed to their community, and we connect to them, and then we plan large-scale events so people can get used to working together again. Our Brickyard leaders are excited, they're zealous, but when they get into these leadership roles, sometimes they forget uh, that uh, the grandmother down the street did not serve in the 82nd Airborne, and you probably have to use a little bit more uh, compassion, a little bit more kindness in order to work with her. We need to get back to face-to-face, human-to-human connection. My name is Paul Tidi. I live in Missoula, Montana. I'm a former Marine officer, and I am currently studying for a graduate degree in cl clinical psychology. The veterans compose such a small fraction of the society that, you know, it's two or three percent at most, but we do have leadership skills. We have drive skills uh, that I think are great complements to society if we use those well, you know, because we want to get things done. When people are talking, the problems have a tendency to solve themselves but when they're not talking and not communicating and the, you know, the entrenchments happen, the battle lines go up, that's when the problems start. I am Dee Clancy. I am from Charleston, South Carolina, and I am a teacher. I'm a Navy veteran. I spent 10 years as a Navy cryptologist. And when I got out, I felt like I was missing something. Um, probably that spirit of service or a sense of purpose. The really cool thing about MPU is, is this cohort of fellows is filled with veterans and civilians, especially this younger generation. I'm so impressed by their, their spirit of service and their civic responsibility. I'm Lawrence Tweeter. I'm a 2019 West Pointer. I'm currently an infantry officer in the U.S. Army. I'm a captain and I'm currently in the process of uh, transitioning out of the Army. I see my time now with More Perfect Union as my chance to 
be a part of something greater post uh, Army and you know help us achieve that desire and say which is a more perfect union where Americans we see each other with value. I was born outside of, U of the U.S. I'm a naturalized citizen. My parents uh, immigrated to the U.S. from a small West African country called Liberia. At the time they were fleeing instability that was spurred uh, due to a civil war. I'm definitely concerned um, at some of the developing trends in our country. When I hear the phrase more perfect union, what comes to mind is the promise. Just like combat, there are times when you gotta ask people to do hard things because they're the right people to do it. We're very humbled at More Perfect Union to have some of the best leaders from across the country come and train and equip our Brickyard leaders at our fellowship training program once a year. The core values of More Perfect Union are service, virtue, mercy, humility, courage, and hope. We believe these are the values America was founded on, and these are the important values that we need in this moment to bring the country back together.